Pretender, you toy with forces beyond your ken, no more. What are you? Why are you doing this? Mortals beg for truth they cannot have. It is beyond what you are, what I was. Know me, know what you have pretended to be. Exalt the Elder One. The will that is Corypheus. You will kneel. You're forcing this fight for no reason. You will resist. You will always resist. It matters not. I am here to anchor. The process of removing it begins now. It is your fault, Geralt. You interrupted a ritual years in the planning, and instead of dying, you stole its purpose. I do not know how you survived, but what marks you was touched, what you flail and rifts, I crafted to assault the very heavens. The anchor to undo my work. The gall. Why did the Divine die? For this chaos? The chaos will empower me and ensure we no longer beg at the feet of the invisible. I once breached the Fade in the name of another to serve the old gods of the Empire in person. I found only chaos and corruption, dead whispers. For a thousand years I was confused, no more. I have gathered the will to return under no name but my own, to champion Wither to Vinter and correct this blighted world. Beg that I succeed, for I have seen the throne of the gods, and it was empty. The anchor is permanent. You have spoilt it with your stumbling. So be it. I will begin again. Find another way to give this world the nation and God it requires. I will not suffer even an unknowing rival. You must die. You expect me to fight. But that's not why I kept you talking. Enjoy your victory. Here's your prize. <laughs>
there. There. Embers. Recent. The Maker! What would you have me tell them? This isn't what we asked them to do. We cannot simply ignore this. We must find a way. And who put you in charge? We need a consensus or we have nothing. Please, we must use reason. Without the infrastructure of the Inquisition, we're hobbled. I can't come from nowhere. She didn't say it could. Enough! This is getting us nowhere. Well, we're agreed on that much. Shh. You need rest. They've been at it for hours. They have that luxury thanks to you. The enemy could not follow. And with time to doubt, we turn to blame. Infighting may threaten as much as this Corypheus. Do we know where Corypheus and his forces are? We are not sure where we are. Which may be why, despite the numbers he still commands, there is no sign of him. That, or you are believed dead. Or without Haven, we are thought helpless. Or he girls for another attack. I cannot claim to know the mind of that creature, only his effect on us. The only thing yelling gets us is a headache. Another headache. They know. But our situation, your situation, is complicated. Our leaders struggle because of what we survivors witnessed. We saw our defender stand and fall. And now we have seen him return. The more the enemy is beyond us, the more miraculous your actions appear, and the more our trials seem ordained. 
That is hard to accept, no? What we have been called to endure. What we perhaps must come to believe. I escaped the avalanche. Barely, perhaps, but I didn't die. Of course, and the dead cannot return from across the veil. But the people know what they saw. Or perhaps what they needed to see. The Maker works both in the moment and in how it is remembered. Can we truly know the heavens are not with us? You saw Corypheus? What do you think of his claims of assaulting the heavens? Scripture says magisters, to winter servants of false old gods, entered the Fade to reach the Golden City, seat of the Maker. For their crime, they were cast out as darkspawn. Their hubis is why we suffer blight, and why the Maker turned from us. If such is the claim of this Corypheus, he is a monster beyond imagining. All mankind continues to suffer for that sin. If even a shred of it is true, all the more reason Andraste would choose someone to rise against him. Whatever the rest of you say, I felt no divine aid at the Conclave or Haven. The struggle ahead seems mine alone. Faith may have yet to find you, but it has already found them. A word. The humans have not raised one of our people so high for ages beyond counting. Her faith is hard won, Lethalan, worthy of pride, save one detail, the threat Corypheus wields, the orb he carried, it is ours. Corypheus used the orb to open the breach, unlocking it must have caused the explosion that destroyed the Conclave. We must find out how he survived, and we must prepare for their reaction when they learn the orb is of our people. Alright, what is it and how do you know about it? Such things were foci. Said to channel power from our gods. Some were dedicated to specific members of our pantheon. All that remains are references in ruins, and faint visions of memory in the Fade, echoes of a dead empire. But however Corypheus came to it, the orb is elven, and with it, he threatens the heart of human faith. Didn't you see? 
The people trust me implicitly. Faith tends to make martyrs of its champions. Whatever the case, that trust cannot grow in the wilderness. You will need every advantage. They arrive daily from every settlement in the region. Skyhold is becoming a pilgrimage. If word has reached these people, it will have reached the Elder One. We have the walls and numbers to put up a fight here, but this threat is far beyond the war we anticipated. But we now know what allowed you to stand against Corypheus. What drew him to you? This isn't more about me being divinely touched, is it? I won't ask you to believe. Whether it's true or not, that's not why you're here now. Your decisions let us heal the sky. Your determination brought us out of Haven. You are the creature's rival because of what you did. And we know it. All of us. The Inquisition requires a leader, the one who has already been leading it. You. Perhaps I didn't hear you correctly. A mage at the head of the Inquisition. Not a mage. You. I happen to be a mage. I will not pretend no one will object, but times are changing. Perhaps this is what the Maker intended. There would be no Inquisition without you. How it will serve, how you lead, that must be yours to decide. Fear running rampant. They need to see a mage standing for what is right. I'll defeat Corypheus standing with them, not over them. 
wherever you lead us. Have our people been told? They have. And soon, the world. Commander, will they follow? Inquisition, will you follow? <laughs> So this is where it begins. It began in the courtyard. This is where we turned that promise into action. But what do we do? We know nothing about this Corypheus except that he wanted your mark. Corypheus wants to restore to Vinter. Is this a prelude to war with the Imperium? I get the feeling we're dealing with extremists, not the vanguard of a true invasion. Tivinter is not the Imperium of a thousand years ago. What Corypheus yearns to restore no longer exists. Though they would shed no tears if the South fell to chaos, I'm certain. Corypheus said he wanted to enter the Black City, that this would make him a god. He is willing to tear this world apart to reach the next. It won't matter if he's wrong. What if he's not wrong? if he finds some other way into the Fade. Then he gains the power he seeks, or unleashes catastrophe on us all. Could his dragon really be an archdemon? What would that mean? It would mean the beginning of another blight. We've seen no darkspawn other than Corypheus himself. Perhaps it's not an archdemon at all, but something different? Whatever it is, it's dangerous. Commanding such a creature gives Corypheus an advantage we can't ignore. Someone out there must know something about Corypheus. Unless they saw him on the field, most will not believe he even exists. We do have one advantage. We know what Corypheus intends to do next. In that strange future you experienced, Empress Selene had been assassinated. Imagine the chaos her death would cause. With his army. An army he'll bolster with a massive force of demons, or so the future tells us. Corypheus could conquer the entire south of Thedas, god or no god. <sighs> I'd feel better if we knew more about what we were dealing with. I know someone who can help with that. Uh, everyone acting all inspirational jogged my memory, so I, I sent a message to an old friend. He's crossed paths with Corypheus before and may know more about what he's doing. He, he can help. I'm always looking for new allies. Introduce me. Parading around might cause a fuss. It's better for you to meet privately, on the battlements. Trust me, it's complicated. Well, then, uh, we stand ready to move on both of these concerns. On your order, Inquisitor. I know one thing. If Varric has brought who I think he has, Cassandra is going to kill him. This is the Inquisition, a dusty old ruin filled with battered soldiers. Brilliant, isn't it? One moment you're trying to restore order in a world gone mad, that should be enough for anyone to handle, yes? Then, out of nowhere, an archdemon appears and kicks you in the head. What? You thought this would be easy? No, I was just hoping you wouldn't crush our village like an anthill. Sorry about that. Archdemons like to crush, you know. Can't be helped. Am I speaking too quickly for you? The attack was unexpected. 
We're all rattled. I'm not rattled. I'm the hero of this tale. Then why isn't Griffius after you? Hmm, good point. Does that make me a lackey? That's dangerous work. I always assumed the elder one behind the Venatori was a magister. But this is something else completely. In Tevinter, they say the Chantry's tales of magisters starting the blight are just that. Tales. But here we are. One of those very magisters, a dark spawn. Who does the Imperium say started the blight? They say Darkspawn were always there. Magisters and the Blight aren't even related. Is that a surprise? No one wants to admit they shit the bed. But if Corypheus is one of the Magisters who entered the Black City and he's Darkspawn, what other explanation is there? Why does that make you angry? Because the Imperium is my home. I knew what I was taught couldn't be the whole truth. But I assumed there had to be a kernel somewhere. But no. It was us all along. We destroyed the world. Last I checked, the Blights hadn't actually destroyed the world. Not for lack of trying. No one will thank me, whatever happens. No one will thank you, either. You know that, yes? That attitude must be why they kicked you out of the Imperium. <laughs> they didn't kick me out? Well, only because they never got around to it. Eventually, they might have. All I know is this. Corypheus needs to be stopped. Men like him ruined my homeland. I won't stand by and let him ruin the world. Oh, and congratulations on that whole leading the Inquisition thing, by the way. Greetings, Inquisitor. That is your title now, yes? I should thank you. The way things ended in Redcliffe, you could have demanded anything you wished. Yet you chose to make us equal partners. I was not expecting that. You rebelled for good reason. I knew you, of all people, would understand. <laughs> I've been a Grey Warden, Grand Enchanter, leader of a rebellion, and now... I am none of those things. Odd where fate takes you, as you are no doubt well aware. I trust everything is well with the mages. We are mostly relieved. An alliance with the Inquisition offers security, although who knows for how long. I'll leave you to it. Before you go, Inquisitor, a question. In Redcliffe, after we left, did you perhaps speak with King Alistair? Considering who you are? He wasn't in the mood to talk. It's just that I knew his father, Marek, back when I was a warden. Oh? That's rather interesting. Does he know that? No, he doesn't. And he shouldn't. I only wanted to know if he was happy. His father had such hopes for him. Don't mind me, Inquisitor. The concerns of an old woman. Nothing more. <laughs> Greetings to you, Inquisitor. I am to serve as assistant to any research concerns. You'll find my skills are exceptional. I hope they prove useful. You're taking over the duties of Minave? Yes. She said she was needed elsewhere, and that I should serve the Inquisition to the best of my ability. What is she doing? I wasn't told. As you were? Yes, Inquisitor. I'm sorry. 
so am I. The names of those we lost. You must blame me for this. We all saw who attacked us. We know exactly who to blame. I keep wondering if I could have done something different. When the first of my lookouts went missing, I pulled the rest back, awaiting more information. If they'd stayed in the field, they could have bought us more time. I was afraid to lose my agents. And instead, we lost Haven. More likely, they would have stayed out there, died, and we would have lost Haven anyway. You don't know that. Their lives could have bought Haven a small chance. My people know their duty. They know the risks. They understand that the Inquisition may call upon them to give their lives. Our people aren't tools to be used and discarded. Your instincts were right. Their lives matter. Can we afford such sentimentality? What if Corypheus... We are better than Corypheus. I'm listening. The Divine's death hit you hard. How have you been feeling? Oh. You are referring to my outburst in the Haven. I... I am much better now. Justinia was such a dear friend and... There were so many things going wrong. Sometimes it's best to talk these things out. I was there when the hero Ferelden defeated the Archdemon. We won the day, and I thought the Maker smiled on me. When the Divine requested my help, I went to her. I owed her that much. I sacrificed so much to do the Maker's work. But now, Justinia is dead. I was angry. I felt betrayed. But I shouldn't have let my emotions get the better of me. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. You were grieving and upset. I understand. Thank you. Now, enough of this. Let us think more pleasant thoughts. I'll leave you to your work. Inquisitor. It's Inquisitor now, right? Remember that war we talked about stopping? Full of little baddies I can stick with little arrows. That's not a friggin' archdemon, is it? Andraste, what do I step in? Odd that you'd ask Andraste over your own gods. My gods? Whatever. They don't talk any more than she does. Not like she's supposed to. I know what happened to you. Or what everyone here thinks happened. It seems... I don't know what it seems. I can't help if you don't explain what's wrong exactly. It's got to be nonsense, doesn't it? What kind of screwed if it isn't? I mean, that Corypheus thing. A magister, right? Story is, he cracked the Golden City. But that's a hazy dream. If not, seat of the Maker, real thing. A seat needs a book, so the Maker, real thing. Fairy stories about the start and end of the world, real things. It's too far, isn't it? I just want to plug the Skyhole rubbish so I can go play. You joined to help the little people caught up in this. But do you believe it or not? In Andraste? Of course. But you doubt what you're seeing and hearing? It can't be true, true. Even fanatics don't want to be this right. Look, I have arrows. I can make this Corypheus believe in those. Good enough? Please be good enough. Keep calling it nonsense. That perspective will keep the Inquisition grounded. Oh, I can do that. Sure could use a few more people shouting no. We fight, the bad things go away, everyone calms down, and everything goes back to normal. A nice, well-paid normal. You're starting to not sound completely crazy. I know, scary, innit? So bring them on. But first, food. I'm starving. Maker, you're a mess. Let me have a look at you. 
Are you all right, my dear? Were you hurt? You look dreadful. You should have seen me an hour ago. We should do something about this dirt. We don't need you frightening the faithful. Let's keep up appearances. You've handled this crisis competently, saving as many lives as you did. But the enemy struck a serious blow against you and the Inquisition. We must recognize that. You must. I'm not going to forgive what happened at Haven. Corypheus will answer for what he's done. You're angry? Good. Anger can save you when everything else is gone. Just make sure you put it to good use. Our enemy advances, Inquisitor. We must not sit idly by. Act first and teach them to fear us. I think you know what needs to be done, my dear. So, this is Skyhold. Come, let's walk the ramparts. I want to examine our fortifications. We'll be able to see Corypheus coming from miles away. On the other hand, that means he can see us from miles away. Let him come. I swear I'll take the Twister Bastard down, even if I have to die to do it. I'm grateful for your support. It's my job, isn't it? Killing Darkspawn? Look, in spite of it all, there is hope. The people flock to your banner. They believe in you. Tell me honestly, are you what they say you are? Andraste's chosen. I wish they'd understand that I'm really nobody. You're somebody. Don't you see what you are to them? Without you, they'd be consumed by despair. We all would. They need you to be Andraste's messenger. It gives them hope. The truth doesn't matter. Ah, uh, listen to me talk. Your time is valuable and I've wasted enough of it.
Inquisitor, meet Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall. Though, I don't use that title much anymore. Hawk, the Inquisitor. I figured you might have some friendly advice about Corypheus. You and I did fight him, after all. This view reminds me of my home in Kirkwall. I had a balcony that overlooked the whole city. I loved it at first. But after a while, all I could see were the people out there depending on me. If I thought like that, I'd never get anything done. How do you put it out of your head? I go out into the wilderness and find something that wants to kill me. That usually clears my mind. It always worked for me. And speaking of things that want to kill you... Varric said that you fought Corypheus before. Fought and killed. The Grey Wardens were holding him, and he somehow used his connection to the Darkspawn to influence them. Corypheus got into their heads, messed with their minds, turned them against each other. If the Wardens have disappeared, they could have fallen under his control again. So Corypheus has the Venatori, the Red Templars, and now possibly the Wardens as well. Wonderful. I didn't come this far just to give you bad news. I've got a friend in the Wardens. He was investigating something unrelated for me. His name is Stroud. The last time we spoke, he was worried about corruption in the Warden ranks. Since then, nothing. Corypheus would certainly qualify as corruption in the ranks. Did your friend disappear with them? No. He told me he'd be hiding in an old smuggler's cave near Crestwood. If you didn't know about Corypheus, what were you doing with the Wardens? The Templars in Kirkwall were using a strange form of lyrium. It was red. I'd hoped the Wardens could tell me more about it. Corypheus had Templars with him at Haven. They looked like they'd been exposed to the lyrium you describe. Hopefully my friend in the Wardens will know more. I'll take any lead I can get at the moment. Good. I'll do whatever I can to help. Corypheus is my responsibility. I thought I'd killed him before. This time, I'll make sure of it. Inquisitor. I heard you had family and friends in Kirkwall. Where are they now? When the Wardens began acting strangely, I had my friend Aveline take my brother out of the Free Marches. Meryl is helping elven refugees who were displaced by the war. I didn't want to take her away from that. Meryl spent enough time fighting for her life with me. Assume Varric's been feeding you information about the Inquisition. What did he say about me? Only good things, I promise. I was a little surprised, actually. Varric isn't one for religion in general, but he thinks highly of the Inquisition. I think the exact phrase was, has a good shot at fixing Blondie's mess. You said you thought you killed Corypheus. The Grey Wardens had him imprisoned. They used my father's blood in a ritual to seal Corypheus inside. But he could still reach out and influence the Warden's thoughts. He sent them after me. And I didn't just think I killed him. When the fight was done, he was dead on the ground. Maybe his tie to the Blight somehow brought him back. Or maybe it's old Tevinta magic. But he was dead. I swear it. Where did you go after the mages rebelled? I heard the Chantry might be sending an exalted march to Kirkwall to put down the rebellion. I hoped that leaving would save lives and force the Divine to divide her forces to come after me. As it turned out, I needn't have bothered. All the circles started rising up, and the exalted march never came. I'd like to know more about Anders. What was he like? Complicated. It's not like the minstrels make it out to be. He wasn't just a monster or a martyr. Maybe he was both. He was trying to change the world. He knew it couldn't happen peacefully. We'll talk later. I'll meet you at Crestwood. Inquisitor, huh? Well, you've got the fortress for it. Speaking of which, when you've got a second, there's something I want to show you. I'd like to know more about the Kunari. You write a book? What I've heard about them sounds fascinating. What you've heard was mostly horse shit. 
All right. What do you want to know? How do the Kunari rule themselves? It's pretty simple. We've got the matriarchy, the priesthood, and the military. The priesthood figures out how Kunari should live in theory. The matriarchy makes it work in practice. And the military keeps the Kunari safe from outside threats. Does it actually work like that? Is there much infighting? <laughs> Not like you're thinking of. People disagree, yeah, but the priests are there to solve disagreements. Here in Orlais, politicking comes from people putting their own gain ahead of the gains of society. If you do that among the Kanari, the Ben Hasrath sets you straight, or kill you. I heard there's no marriage among the Kunari. Yeah, that's true. Kanari love our friends like anyone does, but we don't have sex with them. Kunari don't have sex? <laughs> oh, we definitely have sex. Their Tamasrans will pop your cork whenever you need it. Seriously? Yes. It's not a big deal like it is here. It's like... I don't know. Going to see a healer. Sometimes it's this long, involved thing. It takes all day. Leaves you walking funny. Other times you're in and out in five minutes. Thank you. See you next week. I could work with that. <laughs> I know, right? No drama. Still, it's more fun here. Fewer rituals, more making it up as you go along. Plus, you folk have redheads. <laughs> redheads. How is everyday life different for Kunari? Uh, depends on your job, I guess. Some are just about the same. A baker in Val Royo gets up, gets dressed, and starts work. A baker in Parvolin does the same thing. They don't care about the Empire or the Cube. Mostly they worry about breaking eggs and hope the dough rises right. It can't be exactly the same. The Kunari have no personal freedoms. How many personal freedoms do you figure that baker in Val Royo has? Life isn't about freedom. The baker in Parvolin wonders if she'll be given enough eggs to do her work. Will they come on time? Will the kitchen workers get her bread while it's fresh, or will they come late and blame her because it's stale? Same crap in Val Royo. People are just people. What's it like growing up under the Kuhn? The Tamasrans raise us in these units of kids all our own age. They're like teachers or chantry sisters. They also help figure out what jobs we should do. They had me pegged for military work early on. When they learned I could hit stuff and lie, they started training me for the Ben Hasra. Must have been a good day for you. Yes. It's like being a block of stone with a sculptor working on you. One day, the last of the crap gets knocked off, and you can see your real shape. What you're supposed to be. That's a good day. Do you ever think about what would happen if the Kunari conquered Orle or Ferelden? Some folks, like Cassandra or Cullen, would do fine if they didn't die fighting. Those two love rules. But the mages... Vivienne's too political. Dorian's too arrogant, and Solus is just... weird. They'd all end up dead. Or worse. Both Sarah and Varric would mouth off until they ended up re-educated. Drugged until their minds broke. So, to answer your question... No, I don't think about it much at all. The word Kunari? Is that the race or the religion? Both. Kind of. The humans and elves who follow the Kuhn are the Vidathari. The Kanari who break away from the Kuhn are Talvasha, deserters. What about Kunari who existed before the Kuhn? The people we came from. They're called the Kasith, but we don't use that word for the race. We came south to Thedas because the Kasith were... I don't know. We had to leave. The stories aren't clear. But I don't expect they look much like us. Whatever they are. See you later, Bo. Nice talking with you, boss. You knew where Hawk was all along! You're damned right I did. You conniving little shit! You kidnapped me! You interrogated me! What did you expect? Hey! Enough! You're taking his side? I said enough! 
We needed someone to lead this Inquisition. First, Liliana and I searched for the hero of Ferelden, but he had vanished. Then we looked for Hawk, but he was gone too. We thought it all connected, but no. It was just you. You kept him from us. The Inquisition has a leader. Hawk would have been at the Conclave if anyone could have saved Most Holy... Varric's not responsible for what happened at the Conclave. I was protecting my friend. Varric is a liar, Inquisitor. A snake. Even after the Conclave, when we needed Hawk most, Varric kept him secret. He's with us now. We're on the same side. We all know whose side you're on, Varric. It will never be the Inquisition's. Attacking him now won't help us, Cassandra. Ha! Exactly. And you better not be keeping anything else from us. Ugh. I understand. I must not think of what could have been. We have so much at stake. Go, Varric. Just go. You know what I think? If Hawk had been at the temple, he'd be dead too. You people have done enough to him. I believed him. He spun his story for me and I swallowed it. If I'd just explained what was at stake, if I'd just made him understand... But I didn't, did I? I didn't explain why we needed Hawk. I'm such a fool. Good thing I still like you. I'm serious. You think I'm not? I want you to know. I have no regrets. Maybe if we'd found Hawk or the hero of Ferelden, the Maker wouldn't have needed to send you. But he did. You're not what I'd pictured. But if I've learned anything, it's that I know less than nothing. Something is troubling me, Inquisitor. Leliana is receiving reports of mages becoming possessed, Templars going rogue. No one is dealing with these matters. I was hoping we might, before they get worse. We can certainly look into it. I will mark these incidents on the map as I learn of them, Inquisitor. And I would be pleased to accompany you if and when you investigate. I have some more questions. Why am I not surprised? Tell me about your brother. I would prefer not to speak of Antony. I'll let you get back. What can I do for you? So how did you get the name Iron Bull? I picked it. We don't have names under the queue. Just, I don't know. Job descriptions, I guess. When I came to Orlay, I chose the Iron Bull for myself. But why specifically Iron Bull? This may surprise you, but I really like hitting things. Also, it's THE Iron Bull, technically. I like having an article at the front. It makes it sound like I'm not even a person, just a mindless weapon. An implement of destruction. That really works for me. See you later, Bull. With you, boss. What's going on? What did you want me to come see? Here, come on. I'll show you. Why am I dressed like this? You'll see. Come on, it'll be worth your time, I promise. Evening, Iron Bull. My merc band just joined up. Tanner, I'm from Jader. Well, near Jader. Mira, I was guard captain for Lady Pendel. Signed on after shit blew up at the Conclave. Share a drink? Who's your friend? This is Grim. He doesn't talk much. Hey. So, you ready to kill some demons, or Venatori, or whatever that Corypheus asshole is? This isn't just about killing. We're helping the Inquisitor save the world and build the next empire. 
Hmm. Well, long as I get paid, I'm happy. That's why I signed up. I just couldn't spend my whole life on a farm. Needed to live a little, you know. What about you, Mira? Why'd you join up? I thought you were serving some noble. I saw what happened at Haven. The Inquisitor staring down that monster and his archdemon. I don't sing the chant of light as much as I should. But you can't see something like that and not believe. Well, Grim and I should find our tents. Thanks for the drink. I know every soldier under my command. You don't have that option. But a few faces might help. It was good to get their perspective. Yeah. Sounds like we could use an easy win for boys like Tanner. And vets like Mira have seen enough to be wary. You've got a good army coming along. Remember that. No matter what comes next. This thing is not a stray puppy you can make into a pet. It has no business being here. Wouldn't you say the same of an apostate? Inquisitor, I wondered if Cole was perhaps a mage, given his unusual abilities. He can cause people to forget him, or even fail entirely to notice him. These are not the abilities of a mage. It seems that Cole is a spirit. It is a demon. If you prefer, although the truth is somewhat more complex. Cole warned us about Corypheus at Haven. He saved a lot of lives. And what will its help cost? How many lives will this demon later claim? In fact, his nature is not so easily defined. Speak plainly, Solas. What are we dealing with? Demons normally enter this world by possessing something. In their true form, they look bizarre. Monstrous. But you claim Cole looks like a young man. Is it possession? No. He has possessed nothing and no one. And yet he appears human in all respects. Cole is unique, Inquisitor. More than that, he wishes to help. I suggest you allow him to do so. In my studies, demons either possess something from this world, or were summoned and bound. They almost never look like something you'd mistake for a person. Normally, you'd be correct. But Cole has willfully manifested in human form without possessing anyone. The demons who came through the breach, or through the rifts, weren't possessing anything. These demons were drawn through against their will, driven mad by this world. But Cole predates the breach. From what we can tell, he has lived here for months, perhaps years. He looks like a young man. For all intents and purposes, he is a young man. It is remarkable. I should hear what Cole has to say for himself. Where is he now? If none of us remember him, he could be anywhere. Haven. So many soldiers fought to protect the pilgrims so they could escape. Choking fear. I can't think from the medicine, but the cuts rack me with every heartbeat. Hot, white pain. Everything burns. I can't. I can't. I'm going to... I'm dying. I I'm... Dead. Glad to see you're settling in, Cole. Here I was worried you'd have trouble making friends. Every breath slower. Like lying in a warm bath. Sliding away. Smell of my daughter's hair when I kiss her goodnight. Gone. Cracked 
brown pain. Dry, scraping, thirsty. Here. Thank you. It's all right. She won't remember me. You're using your powers as a spirit to help people? Yes. I used to think I was a ghost. I didn't know. I made mistakes, but I made friends too. Then a Templar proved I wasn't real. I lost my friends. I lost everything. I learned how to be more like what I am. It made me different, but stronger. I can feel more. I can help. If you're willing, the Inquisition could use your help. Yes, helping. I help the hurt. The helpless. There's someone. Hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Someone make it stop hurting. Make her, please. The healers have done all they can. It will take him hours to die. Every moment will be agony. He wants mercy. Help. You say he won't die for hours yet, but you can't know that for certain. His body is failing. He could recover. Or the healers could find another way to help him. How do you know? I don't, and neither do you. That's part of life. Try. I want to stay. Send men to scout the area. We need to know what's out there. Yes, sir. Commander, soldiers have been assigned temporary quarters. Very good. I'll need an update on the armory as well. Now! We set up as best we could at Haven, but could never prepare for an archdemon or whatever it was. With some warning, we might have... Do you ever sleep? If Corypheus strikes again, we may not be able to withdraw. And I wouldn't want to. We must be ready. Work on Skyhold is underway. Guard rotations established. We should have everything on course within the week. We will not run from here, Inquisitor. How many were lost? Most of our people made it to Skyhold. It could have been worse. Morale was low, but has improved greatly since you accepted the role of Inquisitor. Inquisitor Lavellan. It sounds odd, don't you think? Not at all. Is that the official response? <laughs> I suppose it is. But it's the truth. We needed a leader, and you have proven yourself. If we need to start over, Skyhold seems as good a place as any. Once repairs are complete, it will be a strong base of operations. I will do everything I can to ensure the security of our people. You have my word. Roderick was sorry before he died. I wasn't aware you and Roderick were acquainted. He was hurt. Red inside from the Templar, but red outside from the Templar too. Needed help to walk. Limping, light, leaning on the young like old Pepe when the road was icy. He called me a fine young man. He said he was sorry for what he did to you. You didn't try to end his suffering, did you? No. He was dying already, and he welcomed it. The pain wasn't too much. He saw it at the end. Loving light, open arms. Andraste taking him home. He was happy. And sorry. Roderick was a pebble in the Inquisition's boot. 
Little remorse seems only fair. Blood everywhere. Monsters, madness, dying. We're all dying. The Herald stands against it, and heads turn. Desperate and simple, pure. Voices in the Chantry. Years since I'd sung the song and felt it flowing through me. But this is real. This is real. So long since I'd felt it. Falling, flying, faith. And I fought him. Make her forgive me. I hope I did enough. He hates it all because of the darkness behind the door. Some doors should stay shut. I'd like to talk about what happened to you before we met. Before you, Reese was my friend. He showed me I was wrong to kill the mages. I thought I was helping them. Then he and Evangeline went to Adamant, and I went with them. I was worried Evangeline would hurt Reese. We found out dangerous things. It scared Seeker Lambert, and he scared the mages. It started the rebellion. Seeker Lambert told me what I was. Reese couldn't look at me. I ran until I found more Templars. That's all. What was the Spire like when the Mage Rebellion started? Dead and dying, begging and bloody. Some wanted freedom, some peace, some war. Some wanted it all to stop. Evangeline was a Templar. But she helped Reese help the others. She set them free. Adrian was a mage. But she killed mages to force the fight. She wanted blood. Reese just wanted to help. To stop people hurting. Maybe that's why he saw me. What can you tell me about Reese? He was a mage. He saw me when most couldn't. And he remembered. He helped me. And I watched over him. I worried Evangeline would hurt him. She was a Templar. But she didn't like hurting people. When I left, she stayed. Now she watches over him. They should have been with the rebels. Maybe they ran away together instead. Neither of them like killing. If you like, I could use the resources of the Inquisition to locate your friend. No. If they are alive and safe, they should stay away. The last time he saw me, he didn't want to look at me. He saw a monster. Let him forget. What did you mean when you said you killed mages? Some of the mages of the Spire wanted to die. Too sad, too scared, too much. I didn't know what I was. A ghost, I thought. Fading in the fade. When I came to them, they could see me. I used the knife to set them free. When Reese found out, he made me stop, made me understand. There were other ways to help. I didn't know. You murdered helpless mages, and that's all you have to say? Yes. I didn't know, and I stopped when I did. But that doesn't mean I didn't do it. They were hurting, helpless, haunted. It was all I could do. It was wrong. I was wrong. If I start again, you or Cassandra or Cullen need to kill me. What can you tell me about Adamant Fortress? It is old, full of sadness and pain. It should be torn down. The veil is thin. We found a demon there. It had touched a man and made him real again. It scared Reese and Evangeline. The man wasn't supposed to be real. Then the demon found us. It put me back in the cupboard on the bad day. Reese and Evangeline saved me. You said Seeker Lambert told you what you were. I'm hiding Reese from him, but he chants words and sees. I won't let you hurt Reese. My nose explodes, a shower of blood. Just another parasite that's wormed its way into our world, feeding off all the things you can't have. What we found at Adamant made him angry. We were the first rock rolling at the top of a mountain. He had to stop us. He killed so many. He didn't care. Cold. Corrupt. So I came and killed him. If you hated Seeker Lambert, why go to the Seeker Fortress? Because he was right. I was a demon. I saw demons at Adamant. 
They put people in the dark, in the old hurts. I didn't want to be that. I heard the old songs of the Templars at Val Royo and followed them. If I forgot, fought, fell to felling, Templars would kill the demon. I wouldn't hurt anyone again. I'll talk to you later. How do you know? Thank you for Haven. Less so for Redcliffe, but I am committed to serve your worship. Cassandra has calmed down. I think you can take your hand off your crossbow. Define calm down for me in terms of who or what she's punching right now? I wasn't trying to keep secrets. I told the Inquisition everything that seemed important at the time. I bet Cassandra regrets how things went back there. You should talk to her. I appreciate that you're trying to keep the peace, but things between me and the Seeker are as good as they'll get. I keep hoping none of this is real. Maybe it's all some bullshit from the Fade and it'll just disappear. I know I need to do better. I'm sorry. What can I do for you? I'm interested in what you told me of yourself and your studies. If you have time, I'd like to hear more. You continue to surprise me. All right, let us talk. Preferably somewhere more interesting than this. Why here? Haven is familiar. It will always be important to you. We talked about that already. I sat beside you while you slept, studying the anchor. How long can it take to look at a mark on my hand? A magical mark of unknown origin? Tied to a unique breach in the veil? Longer than you might think. I ran every test I could imagine. Searched the Fade, yet found nothing. Cassandra suspected duplicity. She threatened to have me executed as an apostate if I didn't produce results. Cassandra's like that with everyone. <laughs> yes. You were never going to wake up? How could you? A mortal sent physically through the Fade. I was frustrated, frightened. The spirits I might have consulted had been driven away by the Breach. Although I wished to help, I had no faith in Cassandra, or she in me. I was ready to flee. The Breach threatened the whole world. Where did you plan to go? Some place far away, where I might research a way to repair the Breach before its effects reached me. I never said it was a good plan. I told myself, one more attempt to seal the rifts. I tried and failed. No ordinary magic would affect them. I watched the rifts expand and grow, resign myself to flee, and then... It seemed...
seems you hold the key to our salvation. You had sealed it with a gesture. And right then, I felt the whole world change. You didn't say it that way, I don't think. You just said it. Is that how you remember it? That is what I mean about perception shaping our existence. But that's only true in the Fade. Where do you think we were? This isn't real. That's a matter of debate. Probably best discussed after you... Wake up. I've made some inquiries into the Imperial Court. The sooner we deal with the threats to the Empress, the better. The political situation in the Empire is dangerously unstable. It will complicate matters. Everything in the Empire complicates matters. It's the Orlesian national pastime. Turn your nose up at the grand game if you like, Commander. But we play for the highest stakes, and to the death. The Court's disapproval can be as great a threat as the Venatori. We must be vigilant to avert disaster. Exactly what do you mean? How is it more dangerous than usual? The Empress is in the middle of a civil war. Her cousin, Grand Duke Gaspard, seeks to take her throne by force. Leliana reports that a group of elves has been sabotaging both armies, drawing out the hostilities. Orle holds Tevinter at bay. All of Tedas could be lost if the Empire falls to Corypheus. Celine is holding peace talks under the auspices of a grand masquerade. Every power in Orle will be there. It's the perfect place for an assassin to hide. A grand masquerade? I need to go shopping. We don't have enough sway with the court to arrange an invitation. Perhaps a few more alliances. Or soldiers. We need a greater presence in Orle. And soon. <laughs> Impressive, is it not? Fit for a leader, meant to show influence and the burden of it. It is where the Inquisition will sit in judgment. Where you will sit in judgment. Who will I be judging exactly? Those who have done wrong. You will know of them, at the very least. All this presumes they have survived their initial encounter with you, of course. Do I really need to oversee even more death? I'm nearly at capacity. 
I share your distaste for more bloodshed, but it needn't come to that. The Inquisition's sovereignty is derived from the allies who validate it. You are both empowered and bound. Justice has many tools. If their application is clever, execution may even seem merciful by comparison. Is there anyone I should judge? Take the throne when you're ready. We will bring him before you. You recall Gerion Alexius of De Winter. Ferelden has given him to us as an acknowledgement of your aid. The formal charges are apostasy, attempted enslavement, and attempt in assassination on your own life, no less. Tevinter has disowned and stripped him of his rank. You may judge the former Magister as you see fit. Remind me, what's the precedent for nearly ripping apart time at the seams? I couldn't save my son. Do you think my fate matters to me? Will you offer nothing more in your defense? You've won nothing. The people you saved, the acclaim you've gathered. You'll lose it all in the storm to come. Render your judgment, Inquisitor. Your magic was theoretically impossible, Alexius. I could use people like you. Your sentence is to serve, under guard, as a researcher on all things magical for the Inquisition. No execution. <sighs> Very well. do in a place like this. I've walked away from too many burning buildings for one lifetime. This place, though, it'll be all right. It's Inquisitor now, isn't it? That'll take some getting used to. Everyone needs time for this transition. Time won't help. Purpose does, and I've got a load of it. Everyone just got a big, hard reason to hate Corypheus. And we already did, but we didn't have a name. You're the surprise, not him. We left in a hurry. But you got into your old place. Save anything? Family Ammer. It's as stupid as it sounds. It's good to be back at work. I'll be back later. I'll be here. Rivius is back. Oh, shit. You said he was a darkspawn or a magister. What is he really? I'm not sure. I don't think Corypheus really knows either. He's definitely a darkspawn, but when we found him, it was pretty obvious he hadn't heard that. He thinks he's a magister, a priest of Dumat, in fact. He says he broke into the Golden City, like in the Chantry tale. Honestly, I'd rather fight an ancient Darkspawn with a pet archdemon than deal with that hole in the sky. At least you can kill Darkspawn. We didn't just think Corypheus was dead. 
He was dead. No pulse, no breath, full of stab wounds. There wasn't a lot of room for doubt. It makes me wonder. I thought the Wardens imprisoned Corypheus to use him. Maybe they did it because he can't be killed. How did you and Hawk even wind up in a Grey Warden prison for ancient Darkspawn? Corypheus sent people after Hawk. He actually got control of an entire Carter clan. Made them drink Darkspawn blood. Weird shit. We tracked the Carter to an old dwarven fort or something in the mountains. Of course, it turned out to be a trap. They needed Hawk's blood to open the locks holding Corypheus, and they drew us into the prison to get it. There has to be a way to defeat Corypheus. We'll find it, don't worry. I hope you're right. Maker's breath, what have I let loose? You had nothing to do with this, Farry. I was the one who led Hawk to Corypheus. If I hadn't tracked the Carta to that ruin... But you've got more important things to do than listen to me worry. Just let me know when you want something shot. Sleep well? I've never done anything like that before. Do you regularly talk to people in dreams? No. Consider that one more rule you have effortlessly broken in your rise to power. I had no idea that the Anchor would allow you to dream with such focus. It is truly remarkable. But I am reasonably certain we are awake now. And if you wish to discuss anything, I would enjoy talking. I'd like to hear more about what you saw in your exploration of the Fade. I would be happy to share it with you. Tell me about the old ruins you explored. I found the ruin of Baron Dur, a lost Tevinter city buried deep beneath the dead and barren wasteland. Volcanic ash had sealed it tight. In one dark moment, every living creature in the city seared and smothered. They were statues in the ashes, like a mold made to recall the lost. Tell me about a spirit you encountered. I met a friendly spirit who observed the dreams of village girls as love first blossomed in their adolescence. With subtlety, she steered them all to village boys with gentle hearts, who would return their love with gentle kindness. The matchmaker, so I called her. That small village never knew its luck. Tell me about the old memories you found in the Fade. I saw a savage human horde go marching toward the battlefront. They sang a soldier's hymn to keep formation. The primal music shook the ground. These savage, unwashed warriors carried harmonies no chantry choirs mastered. Though their cause was all but hopeless, they sang songs that made the spirits weep. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Inquisitor, I've found where the Red Templars come from. They're in full redoubt. The knights were fed red lyrium until they turned into monsters. Samson took over after their corruption was complete. How do you know Samson? He was a Templar in Kirkwall, until he was expelled from the Order. I knew he was an addict, but this... Red lyrium is nothing like the lyrium given by the Chantry. Its power comes with a terrible madness. Samson's armor was glowing with this stuff. He'll go mad soon enough. He seemed clear-eyed at Haven. Even so, a deluded commander is no less worrisome. The Red Templars still require Lyrium. If we find their source, we can weaken them and their leader. I like finding the Red Templars' vulnerabilities before fighting them head-on. We'll need every advantage against what courses through their veins. Caravans of Red Lyrium are being smuggled along trade roads, Investigating them could lead to where it's being mined. If you confront them, be wary. Anything connected to Samson will be well guarded. As leader of the Inquisition, you... There's something I must tell you. Whatever it is, I'm willing to listen. Right. Thank you. Lyrium grants Templars our abilities, 
but it controls us as well. Those cut off suffer. Some go mad, others die. We have secured a reliable source of lyrium for the Templars here. But I no longer take it. You stopped? When I joined the Inquisition. It's been months now. You've never complained. Why would I? I chose this. After what happened in Kirkwall, I couldn't. I will not be bound to the Order or that life any longer. Whatever the suffering, I accept it. But I would not put the Inquisition at risk. I've asked Cassandra to... watch me. If my ability to lead is compromised, I will be relieved from duty. Thank you for telling me. I respect what you're doing. Thank you, Inquisitor. The Inquisition's army must always take priority. Should anything happen, I will defer to Cassandra's judgment. Strange thing. When I reached out, my dagger was gone. Just gone. Now where I found it? In a bag. What are you doing? Listening. Eyes rough, jangling armor hurts my ears, back aching, fingers too clumsy for knots. Wind cool like Aunt Eloise's pond. Lips scolded as I sip. Warmth blossoms. First kiss in the barn. What was his name? Tin jangle as the blood spills. Pierre's wrapped body on the wagon to the chantry. Five more minutes. My fault. Can you listen to anyone's mind like you did hers? No, they have to need me. Pain, fear, sadness, guilt, anger, hurt. Things I can fix. Can you do something for her? Yes. It's okay. Nothing you did mattered. What? Who are you? They lie there, and sometimes they die, just like Pierre. You can't save them. I don't... I don't know who you are. Wait. That didn't work. Let me try again. You'll forget me in a minute. What are you going to do? Make her forget me. Then do it again, the right way. Cole, stop. Inquisitor, your worship... What are you doing here? Is this man with you? Yes. Sorry to trouble you. How do I do it right if I've done it wrong and I can't make her forget? Don't root around inside her head. Treat her like a normal person. Your Worship, is there... Do you need something of me? You were sad. Of course I was sad. A man died because I couldn't save him. It wasn't your fault. You could work until you fell over and you still wouldn't save everyone. Thank you for saying that. Excuse me, Your Worship. She's not better. She needs time to work through it. If I'd done it right, it would have worked faster. Then you have time to work through it too. I, I don't understand. But thank you for trying to help. You. 
Your worship, I'm serving now, in a different way. <laughs> of standards. That'll guide the dragon right in. Someone emptied a whole bag of turnips into the fire. Ah, oh, make it, the smell is everywhere. I was gonna use them for dinner and then... I can't recall who took them. Can you arrange what we discussed earlier, Ambassador? I found the money. The Inquisition will compensate the families of those we lost at Haven. Thank you. Any word? Nothing yet. Inquisitor. 